everyone, this is three questions with Jill Seiler. There we go. Jill, you haven't uh, you haven't been on with the sound effects before. You're on my no, practice. and I love them. They're fantastic. Oh wait, it get, it's going to get worse as we go. So if you, because I, I I got a soundboard since we talked about. It. So Jill has actually been on my podcast um, a long time ago, and uh, and like I said, last Christmas I got <laughs> the little sound machine. So it's fun. And so we're, before we get into the three questions, and Jill, you're actually the first. You are literally the first person doing three questions of 2022. So I like save this spot just for you. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. So you're like the first one of the of the brand new I season love it. of the Innovators Mindset podcast. So before we get into the three questions, um, you got to really check out Jill's book. And I've been practicing saying this because I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm having a really hard time here. Drive through the five. Yeah, I had to like slow down to say it. And it's love been it. amazing book. People love it. I just see so much uh, claim to it. This is actually one of my favorite quotes. And it was actually featured in my 20 quotes to start off 2021. Mm -hmm. And I do that post of that every year. And I just love this part, Jill. Um, Our sphere of influence is not dependent on our title, our role, or our position. Our sphere of influence is dependent on the work that we do and how we support others along the way and bring them into our journey. And I know that you totally lead um, in a way that you are just you know, developing leaders all over the world in the work that you're doing, where you were uh, in Gunner. Is it Gunner? Am I saying it right? It is Gunner, yes. Right. And I learned that the last time we did the podcast. So can you just, before we get into the questions, just talk sure. a little bit about Thrive Through the Five, what the book is about, um, and, and just kind of talk about that experience of like publishing it, how it's been going for the first year that's been out. It has been an amazing year, year and a half since we spoke. And I'll tell you, just putting this book together was um, such a joy. Um, The book is Thrive Through the Five, meaning that I love my job 95% of the time. I love what I do. And I have in all of my roles in education, as a teacher, as a coach, an assistant principal, campus leader, district leader, and superintendent for the last 10. I've loved every role that I've had. But there is this small part of all of our work that is so incredibly difficult. Um, And I'll tell you this past year and a half, um, really been difficult. People joke with me. They're like, you know, Jill, would you still title it Thrive Through the Five? Like there's this 5% that's really tough. And this past 18 months, I don't know if I'd like Thrive Through the 55 or people joke, like, what's your book number two? And I'm like, I don't know when the five turns into the 95. Like (laughs) it's been a really challenging year, but I have loved connecting with teachers and with leaders about this message of how do you not just survive through really hard times, but how do you thrive through them? It's been a, a joy. So like you, you actually started a new role. So you were the last time we talked to you, you were a superintendent, you were a superintendent for a while. So you are working with TAS and I have the, I am super excited to uh, join that conference coming up very, very soon. So how do you kind of see um, that message in your work? Because you're working with basically leaders, like all over Texas, obviously, but obviously through like, you know, uh, connected organizations throughout uh, the United States. So like, how do you see kind of that message um, when you're working with leadership right now? Yeah. So I have this great opportunity to lead professional learning, which is my love um, for all leaders statewide. And so I work with everyone from assistant principals all the way to tenured superintendents. And of course, really at those, some of those crossroads, um, our aspiring superintendents, our first time superintendents and, and just everything in between. And to be able to just support and equip them where they are, especially in a time. Mm -hmm. I mean, George, the work of the superintendent has always been challenging, but it has never been more challenging as a leader at any level than it has been for the past 18 months. And I'd extend that to teachers too. There's been no more difficult season than there has been this past year and a half. So it's been just a blessing to be a part of just helping folks just really learn how to thrive through some, some of those challenging times. Right. And I think, I think Jill, like, you know, having conversations with you and by the way, Jill does work with school districts, you know, outside too. And if you ever want to bring Jill in, I would suggest. Uh, Thanks for the plug. Appreciate it. Seriously. And, and because I think what I really appreciate about your work, like, I think a lot of people, sometimes when they hear some of these messages, it's like, just let's just ignore all the negative things happening in the world and just kind of move forward. And I think that's not what you're talking about. It's actually, how do we address these things to actually get better, to, to grow through this process? And I think that's what's necessary is that we have to like be honest and address some of these issues that people are facing in education, right? Like, you know, teacher, like people will say sub shortages, mm-hmm. um, you know, 
teacher burnout, things like that, to actually bring people to a place where we find solutions. And I think that is what really kind of resonates with, with your work. And that's why, like, I so appreciate all that you do to kind of really inspire leaders by, and by leading by example, not by just telling people what to do. Well, and I appreciate that. And I don't think that there's anything worse in a challenging time than to work for a leader who doesn't have a grasp on reality or who is toxically positive. And it's, it's that both. It's that you have to just lay out the reality in front of people, which they already know because they're living it. But then to say, here's how we're going to get through it together. And I want your feedback in, in just for you to join me along the way. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I'm, I know that as people listen to you, as people have connected with you, and I would definitely check out the, the links in the description, you'll actually find Jill's book uh, there as well. I know that uh, it, it was actually, when I think when you're on the podcast, like for me, COVID, well, I, well it's not for me, for, every, for everybody, COVID just kind of started. I'm like, oh, this is kind of a perfect book right now, right? Like, right. It's like, like you timed it. It's a little weird. Right. Well, and the crazy thing is, is it wasn't timed. Like I right. turned in my manuscript of November, 2019 before COVID was even a thing. Right. And so right. just to, to know that what a blessing it has been to be able right. to share that message during this time, because it has been <laughs> definitely relevant. Yeah. It's, 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 it's an awesome book. And I, and I read it actually in one sitting and which is Love it. tells me something. So, um, it, it is a fantastic book. I loved it. Super accessible. Lots of great ways to kind of really you know, uh, lift, lift the work that you're doing right now. So all that being said, uh, you're obviously a very inspiring educator. People all over the world know your work and are getting more uh, connected to it. So when you look back at your, you know, career as an educator, you look at, back at your time as a student, who is a teacher that you think of that really inspired you and, and why? So I have to share with you two. Um, one that I had um, as a student myself and one that I got just the opportunity to work with. So the first is um, a professor that I had. I went to the University of Pittsburgh. I was a politics and philosophy major. And I took this course called Global Environmental Politics with a professor by the name of Brian Harrison. We, um, it was not content that I was super uh, excited about, mm-hmm. but I had heard that he was a great professor. And that's why I took the course. And man, they were not wrong. He was incredible. Not only just relevant, he was super challenging, made you fall in love with that content, but he designed these learning experiences that were just unlike anything else I had experienced in college. And so like one of the pieces that we did was just this simulation um, where we had to try to pass environmental policy. And every piece of that policy had points and different people were assigned countries that that point would be positively or negatively impact. And so we had to find ways Ways to like put this together and it, it gave me a love for politics it gave me a love for just bringing people together to a common mm-hmm. vision and it was life-changing just watching him teach um, and it really impacted me in terms of my future career but I'll tell you the other teacher that has really inspired me was one of the first teachers I worked with is a first year teacher brand new first year mm-hmm. teacher and he was my next door neighbor and he was the department chair I taught social studies And the thing about it is that every time I saw him, like his kids were so excited to get into his room. They they were like lined up in the morning. They would stay after school. And this guy, like if you met him, like you would not look at him and go like, this was not Dave Burgess. He was not like jumping on tables with like a pirate thing, right? Like you just looked at him and you were like, he wore a same black suit and white shirt every single day. He was very calm, very steady, almost mm-hmm. monotone. And I remember, and he even won like the Milken Award, like this national teaching mm-hmm. award. And I was like, I have got to go find out what's going on. And so I finally got the opportunity to go in and observe his class. And I was mesmerized. Mm-hmm. Like I was a fun teacher and I was an engaging teacher, but I saw him just empower students and that level of rigor in that class because of the ownership that they had of the learning and mm-hmm. pushing one another, like he was a master facilitator. And uh, and I was completely blown away um, just by uh, not only how wrong my, mis- you know, my perceptions were, but just of what quality teaching and learning right. looks like. And it was, I had a long way to go. I love that. What, what was, what was his name? Joe Kiki. Joe Kiki. Is that, am I yeah. saying that? So Joe is Kiki, it- you got it. Joe Kiki and Brian Harrison. Yes, Brian Harris. Mm-hmm. So Brian Harris. So Joe Kiki and Brian Harris. You got a little well, shout, shout out there. Out there. there you go. Yeah, so that's it. awesome. I, I think for me, this is, um, uh, you know, like you mentioned, Dave, and Dave is obviously a good mutual mm-hmm. friend of ours. And mm-hmm. I actually don't think I would ever have the energy that Dave's has. And I, I would, I would love my kids to be in Dave's class. 
And it, and I also know that what Dave does, and I think when you're talking about uh, Joe and Brian, you know, kind of a common theme mm -hmm. is really the transfer of ownership to students in that learning process. And I think that to me is the most important thing because I think a lot of times what people get lost is, you know, that teacher that gets you excited and you can easily memorize the content as opposed to kind of seeing how, how empowered you are through that process. And when you're mm -hmm. talking about like all three of those educators, I think that's, that's really, really powerful. And so the next question, and I, this is a really tough one for me to ask you because you're probably one of the most inspiring administrators that I know. So I can't even imagine like, you know, this would be really tough. I, you must have had some really great influences, mm -hmm. um, you know, in your work. So when you think of a, like a, an administrator uh, in your career that really inspired you, who, who's one you think of and why? Well, and so the same theme is going to hold true, which right. is, you know, what I learned in that first question is that not all teachers look the same. Right. You can have incredible teaching and learning going on, and those people can look totally different. And I learned that through administrators too, just that leaders, they don't always have to look the same. They don't always have to have that, if, whether it's charisma or, you know, it, it is just that person who truly cares. And so I've had the great fortune of having so many people that I've had the privilege to grow up under in terms of their leadership. But the one that stands out was the one that moved me from teaching to leading in terms of just that aha moment. And her name was Jamie Smith. And the thing about her is that she was like the, the accidental leader. Like she, I don't, maybe, maybe she had the lifelong plan to go into leadership, but I don't think so. She was a lifelong coach. She coached basketball mm -hmm. and man, she was beloved and she was tough. And then all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, she became uh, an assistant principal. And that was so shocking to me because I never saw her in that role. She had tremendous mm. leadership on our campus, but I never thought she'd go and be an AP. Mm. And I remember asking her one day, you know, Jamie or Coach Smith, like, what made you decide to do that? And she said, you know, Jill, it's super simple. I loved the work that I did as a classroom teacher and as a coach, but my influence was so small because it was on those kids who chose to be in my program. And I wanted to enlarge my influence. Uh -huh. And this was the way that I knew how to do that. And that really stuck with me. She went into it for all the right reasons. And that manifested in the way that she led and the way that she loved kids, the way that she kept that toughness, but you know, put it arm in arm with care and compassion as well. Um, she showed me what leadership could look like and painted a path for me to get there. That, that's awesome. And I, and I like a, a theme that I'm noticing too, with the people that you're talking about, is those high expectations that we have for mm. people. And I think a lot of times that to me is that how do we actually bring people up, not like try to level everything off. Right. And I think yes. that to me is such a, a, a really powerful uh, aspect of this. I, I think about this when you're talking about Jamie, by the way, Jamie Smith. The soundboard is fantastic. Out of button. So uh, when, when, when you're thinking about this, uh, a lot of people say to me, uh, you know, like, I, I really don't want to become a principal. I don't really want to go into admin because like, I, I really like being around kids. I was like, I was around kids all the time. Right. 100%. So I, think, I think that's you, you, there's a, there's an opportunity there to kind of shape it the way that you want. Right. And so like a lot of people who go into teaching, they become the teacher they wish they would have had. Right. Mm. And I think it's the same thing in, in administration. You don't have to be the principal you used to have. You can learn from those people but be the principal you wanted. And I think, you know, at, you know, different roles, I think that that's something that's really important to me. And so obviously, you know, you wrote a book uh, and you share a lot of your learning and you are just doing incredible work right now, but I guarantee that this is something, and as you evidence in, you know, your stories that you're sharing, that you've learned a lot through this process. So if you go mm. back to your first year of teaching and give yourself advice, what would that be? Cool. If I were to go back and give myself advice as a first year teacher, you know, some of the things that I think about, you know, number one is just the teaching is it's, it's all the things mm -hmm. like, and here's what I mean by that. You know, when I went in as a first year teacher, I remember just so desperately, like I didn't want to screw it up. Right? right. There were so many things that I was technically invested in. Like I need to do this and I need to do this. And my content standards are here and I need to share my lesson plans in here. There were like so many rules with it. But right. one thing I wish I'd been told in my first year is it's not about, or it's not about whether or not it's fun or it's rigorous or it's, you know, personal or professional it's, it's all the things that's, and so as a teacher, you know, just recognizing that you can have fun and you can have high expectations and right. have this classroom that's rich in teaching and learning. You can be professional 
and you can have personal relationships with your kids in terms of knowing what they love and, and forming those bonds. You can be about content and also have a love for the, the students in your room. And I think that would be one piece. Another piece of advice that I think about in, in my own head is to be you. And that goes back to what I talked about with the three people that I shared, you know, it doesn't all look the same. And right. so even though you might not look the same as your next door teacher, who's been there for 25 years, a, that doesn't mean that you are better or worse and, and be like, teachers are all going to have different strengths and lean into those strengths and right. let that make a better connection with kids. And the last thing I'd say is this, is that, you know, you got to find the joy, right? Like right. I just wrote this book about how to, you know, thrive through really challenging times, but we have to be realistic about the fact that, mm. um, that teaching is hard and that this is hard work. Working with kids is hard. Working with your colleagues is hard. Sometimes working with your leadership is hard. Right. There are hard parts of our job, but there is also so much joy. And by the way, if there's no joy, it's probably not the profession that we need to be in. But for so many of us, there is incredible joy. So find what makes us happy and lean into that and figure out what it is that doesn't make you happy and find some ways to like remove that from, from your work. Because when we are happy, when we are able to bring our whole selves into the classroom, we are able to serve and love and care for and teach our students well. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that those connections between like authenticity that you talk about, which is so important, because kids will read through that stuff right away, right? If you're not who Absolutely. you are, Absolutely. I think that there is a, such a powerful connection between that notion of authenticity and joy, right? If I was going about my day being something that I wasn't. Uh, that would get to me. I, that would, you know, I think a lot of times when we, you know, kind of act the way that we think it's important that we do. And this is something I always tell when, um, when I talk to, you know, we we've done work together on speaking mm -hmm. and talking about this. Is that really just be yourself a bit louder when you're on stage? Don't try to be mm -hmm. what you see someone else being, right? Because people yeah. read through that stuff right away. And I, I, it makes me love what I do because it, somebody actually gave me a really good compliment the other day. They said, I've seen you speak and I've seen you do podcasts in the way that you write. It's all the same. Like you're the same person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. And you know, that's, it kind of makes me happy because I want to be myself, you know, and, and share some of that learning with me. So, um, I, I just love talking to you, Jill. You, I, I really appreciated kind of getting to know you uh, a lot over the last year and, and watching your leadership journey, but also, um, I just love watching how many people you're influencing right now. Mm. And I, I know that that's going to just actually grow exponentially. And, and then I can say, I knew you really early on, right? Well, I so appreciate that. And one thing that's really resonating um, that you've said in terms of me um, is be you, but be you louder. Yeah. And I think that there are so many of us that have gifts to share and have things to say, yeah. especially our teachers, and we just really need to empower them and give them yep. the voice to say and share those things. And that's why I love platforms like Twitter and blogging yep. and all of those things, because you get to do that. Be you, but yep. be you louder. I love it. I love it. Jill, anyone connect with Jill, you're going to see uh, Jill's Twitter, uh, Instagram, but you also see uh, connections to her book. It is absolutely amazing. I guarantee it. And Jill will refund you money if you don't love it. 100%. Because I know it's not going to be an issue because you're going to love it. Yeah. It's, it's a, a fantastic read. Uh, you really love it. So, Jill, thank you so much. Everyone, thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. And, Jill, we got the outro. Music. It's the best. You got to get one of these now. Home office. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. Thanks.